Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm excited to share my work on revealing network level brain behavior relationships with edge functional connectivity. A quick background on functional connectivity. It is the correlation between two regional blood, blood oxygen level dependent signals. And it's computed as the element wise product of the Z score that is then averaged to make up a single element in this functional connectivity matrix. Uh, Olaf Sporns, Richard Betzel, and many others here at IU Bloomington have developed a new method where we stop one step short of computing this Pearson correlation, and now we have an edge time series, which gives us an index of co-fluctuation over time for sets of region pairs. And using these edge time series, we can compute a summary metric, such as root sum squared in this case, and we can rank each time point based on its absolute co-fluctuation using root sum squared and extract components by making cuts with, along the RSS uh, from highest to lowest RSS. When we do this in an IADRC data set, this is the functional connectivity matrix. Uh, this is the average for the full data set of 152 participants that I worked with. And you can see this resting state network structure. And when we take the subsets of data here divided into five bins of 20% of RSS, uh, making up 20% of the data ranked by RSS, you can see that that network structure is still present in, in there, but the magnitude of the co-fluctuation is really what changes. But there is individual variability that is present between subjects. So this matrix shows how correlated these components are to each other in functional connectivity on average within each subject in that data set. And you can see that there is variability in terms of their correlation uh, be between the bins with the higher bins, these higher RSS time points being more related to functional connectivity. So with this in mind, we can ask whether or not functional connectivity components, these RSS bins can reveal brain behavior relationships in Alzheimer's disease that we cannot capture with conventional functional connectivity that is shown here. To do that, I employed a variant of the network contingency analysis framework using correlation. And how it's done is for a set of functional connectivity matrices or components, we compute a correlation to a behavioral variable of interest at each edge, at each connection in the matrix. And then we create a summary statistic for each network block now, asking how many edges within the block were significant. And, we can, and from this matrix, we can now compare it relative to a null model and ask whether or not the number of significant correlations exceeds that observed in, uh, in our null model, in our scrambled data. We tested two null models, which is the brain behavior null model, where we scramble the scores and functional connectivity pairings, and the network block null model, in which the, stru the structure of the network was scrambled. And I'm going to highlight results from the brain behavior null model, showing the relationships that were not found in conventional functional connectivity. The first was executive function, was correlated with the lower RSS bin with the, for the limbic and dorsal attention network. We had two correlations for the language domain where the dorsal attention network and the dorsal attention somatomotor interaction was correlated with middle RSS bins. And finally, attention and processing speed was correlated with that 20 to 40% lower middle bin within the frontal parietal network. If we visualize the average connectivity, the average functional connectivity component values on the x-axis against the cognitive score on the y-axis. You can see the executive domain, the relationship was predominantly positive. For the language domain, these relationships, again, were largely positive. In cases where, like, for example, this was a significant block, but it doesn't look like it, this is because this is a frequency statistic, so the network average data may not necessarily reflect the full direction of the relationship. And finally, for the attention and processing speed in the frontal parietal control network, the relationship was predominantly negative. So from this, I think that edge time series based filtering of functional connectivity data may reveal important subject or disease related variability that can help us better understand brain function and its changes in ADRD. With that, I'd like to thank the Sporns Lab, the Betzel Lab, 
uh, the T32, which has supported me, and our collaborators at the IU School of Medicine campus. Thank you.